Welcome to the DevGraph Tech Talk series. I'm your host, Darren. In this video, we're gonna get you started deploying applications to engine yard containers. This is the second generation platform as a service we built with our 10 years of experience with Ruby on Rails, PHP, and Node. With EYK, now you get the flexibility and scalability of containers. The first step is you're gonna create a cluster within your account. So this is in a chosen geographic region and it runs within your own virtual private cloud or VPC. It's isolated and secure. Everything runs within an account dedicated for your resources, but it's managed by the platform. Now within the cluster, you can have one or more applications and these are of course composed of many containers. You can define different process types. So each container scales independently, which is very nice. There's a lot of flexibility. Let's look in more detail. So each application maps one-to-one -one with a Git repository. Each repository has one Docker file, and this is where you define what you want your container image to be, including all of your runtime dependencies. So this leads to reliable, repeatable deployments. All of the process types within the application will use that same container image. You just define a proc file, and each line has a command to run for each type. So it's fairly common to have a web component. You may have other process types that are asynchronous workers or tasks, and you just list each one as a different process type in that file. Each of those are gonna run in a container that's gonna scale based on its demand. Now the web process type has the added behavior that traffic coming into your domain gets routed to that web component. You'll automatically get this routing. It will automatically be load balanced across container instances, all of this by default with the platform. So how does all of this deployment work? Well, when you create your EYK application, a new Git remote target is created. And all you need to do is Git push to that remote EYK target. That's it. It packages, builds, and deploys your code to the platform. You can get started by browsing to engineyard.com. In the upper right-hand corner, click on Start a Free Trial, and that'll take you to the sign-up page. First, enter your contact information to create your EngineYard account. Next, you will provide your billing information, and following that, you will confirm everything and see that your account is being provisioned. You will receive an email once you're able to create a cluster, but you can access your account now using the email and password that you use during sign-in. Our account doesn't have any clusters yet, so once ready, you can click Add Cluster and give it a name. I'm going to deploy in this video a quiz game, so I'll call it Game Cluster, I'll choose an AWS region, and then tie it to my account. After you click Create Cluster, you'll see that it's provisioning and this status will be updated once it's done. Keep in mind, it could take 10 or 15 minutes for that to complete. While that's provisioning, scroll up to the Command Prompt icon up top. That'll take you to the page where you can download and install the EYK CLI. There are instructions for supported platforms. I happen to be on a Mac, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this command into a shell prompt and that will download and install the CLI. We can go back to the clusters tab and we see that our cluster is now ready. It has a domain name, which is used in the login command. And below you can see the network information and the VPC that it runs in. We'll go ahead and copy this login command and we'll use that to do EYK SSO login. This uses the browser to authenticate. I've already done that, so I'm successfully logged in now. You can always confirm that you're logged in by running the EYK who am I command. Now the next thing you wanna do is add your SSH key. So if you're on a Mac or on Linux, it probably looks something like this. This allows you to do secure file transfers with the platform. From here on out, we can use either the CLI or the console. I'll go ahead and use the CLI in this video. Remember we said that applications are based on a Git repository? So in order to create our app, I'll go ahead and clone the repository for our Ruby quiz. If we look at this project, it's a basic Rails application. Now we don't need to make any code changes. However, we do need to put our code in a container. So there's three options here. We can let the platform auto detect our stack and package up our application. This will work for simple apps. Or we can use the EYK init command to create some basic templates for us. Alternatively, you can bring your own Docker file if you already know what you wanna do. Let's begin by looking at the templates that EngineYard will create for us. The init command does this, and you can see that it asks for a stack. Now this is the Ruby version that you want to use. So we'll start with 2.5. You can see that it generated a Docker file, proc file, and some other optional configurations that are referenced in these templates. If we take a look at the Docker file that it generates, it's based off of the EngineYard 2.5 image. It does an install and then sets up the Ruby application. 
If we look at the proc file, it has a few entries, all of which are commented out right now. Of course, a web entry, and then there are some other optional features that you can use. This provides a great starting point if you're not that familiar with the Docker file syntax. I happen to already have a Docker file for this project, so I will copy those in, and I can show you what's in the Docker file. It's pretty straightforward. It extends from the Ruby 2.6 base image, installs Node.js, packages the Rails application, and then exposes it on port 3000. The proc file only has the single entry, which is my Puma web server. Now, before you git push the EYK, you want to make sure that these changes are checked into your local git repository. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. Great. Optionally, you could test this locally using Docker Desktop. I've run this before, so we'll go ahead and proceed. At this point, I'm gonna create my EYK application, and you give the application a name. I'll choose Ruby Quiz. At this point, it's created the new Git remote target, so now there is an EYK target, and all we have to do at this point to deploy is push to that target. It's taking all of my artifacts from the Git repository, building and packaging them into an application, and deploying it to our fully managed platform. To see my application now, I simply do EYK open, and that launches a browser window with my Ruby quiz, which I've called the New Year Trivia Challenge. We'll click to start the quiz. My name's Darren, I'll provide my name, and our first question is, which investment is shown in the graph here? You cryptocurrency fans may recognize this five-year graph, which is actually Bitcoin. It's done quite well, even gone higher than what is shown there. A really nice feature is that all of your application logs are consolidated and can be viewed using the logs command. Now, if you ever forget what some of the options are, just use the help. So here, the minus N, you can specify how many lines you want to go back into the past. If you want to see what's running, you can use PS. We only have a single web component running, and that's because our proc file just had the one entry. You can get a more holistic view by using the info command that will show you the timestamps, who created it, the URL, and also the process information. Now, one other way you can determine what is, what is actually going on in your application is using the apps run command. This will pick an arbitrary container and run it, so you only want to use this for read-only commands. Here, I'm just gonna do a listing in the app directory, and this is helpful if you wanna see, did my Docker file behave the way that I expected it to? Okay, so let's go back to the web console now. If I go to the Applications tab, I can see my Ruby quiz, and I've got just a single container. If you click on that, now you get a lot more information. I can see I just have the single process type. Also, the URLs and the domains are here. You can stop and restart your application as well as delete it from this console. If you go to Config, you can manage your environment variables, which are accessible from your applications. This is helpful for customization. Also, if you want to manage secrets that are needed by your application, environment variables are a great way to do it. On the scaling tab, we're currently using static scaling, but we can go to auto scaling. We currently support CPU utilization based scaling. So this is a really nice feature. You don't have, you just set it and forget it. Let the platform take care of your scaling needs. On the releases tab, you can see we've got the initial release and then the one that we just performed. Rollbacks are very safe, efficient, and fast using this console feature right here. You can choose what version you want to roll back to. On the metrics tab, we're gonna see some inline metrics for our containers. Our desired scale right now is one because we've got that static scaling setting. We don't have any data yet on some of these other CPU and HTTP requests. As we use our application more, we'll start to see data there. And you can also go to the full dashboard in Grafana by clicking view all metrics. On the logs tab is another way to easily see all of those application logs to find out what's going on in your application. So that's just a quick tour through the Engine Yarn containers, platform as a service, we hope you'll check us out. We think this is a great way to deploy applications on a scalable, robust platform with very little effort. So check us out at engineyard.com. This is Darren, your host. We'll see you next time on the DevGraph Tech Talk series.